And good morning, everyone. Welcome to North Citrus Christian Church, where the sun comes through the clouds. Um, what a beautiful day out here in Central Florida. And we want to welcome you all here in person and also those who are joining us uh, online uh, that are coming. You're missing out on a beautiful day here. We'd love to have you back uh, here in person as you have the opportunity. And then also we have some out in our parking lot today listening on our FM transmitter. And so they're available to participate in the service as well. So wherever you are watching or listening today, we welcome you. Uh, our theme for the day is on unity. And so we we're going to talk about how we are unified in Christ. Amen? Um, through the sermon series, we've taken a look already at God's gift of grace. We're going to take a look at unity today. And then we'll be looking at humility and overcoming worry. And then leading up to Valentine's Day, which falls on a Sunday this year, and extending love. So that's just around the corner. If you've been in the stores, you know it's just around the corner. Because uh, there's Valentine's everywhere. So let's start off by standing and singing together, We Are One in the Bond of Love. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. Let us see. If you just kind of turn around and smile at somebody close by, I'm sure they'll appreciate that smile coming your way. Hey. <laughs> you may go ahead and take a seat as we welcome you here this morning. If you are here, perhaps for the first or second time, we extend a special welcome to you and ask that you uh, take a little contact card uh, that you'll find in the pew pocket in front of you. Um, that simply just gives us an opportunity to get your contact information, name, address, phone number, etc. Uh, when you're done with that, uh, at the end of the service, there are wooden boxes on either side of the auditorium and one in the back. It is an opportunity to place your card in. As well, this is where our uh, members and regular attenders also give offerings. Uh, we do not pass a plate here at North Citrus Christian Church. We believe that the offering that you have is between yourself and God. So opportunity for you to put those in the offering buckets. Of course, there's always an opportunity to give online as well. Uh, there's even a Q, uh, T code, QR, I never can get that Q right. It's a QR code, a QR code on the back. You can scan that or you can go to our website and there's opportunities to uh, give electronically um, as well. So those opportunities are for you. Today, um, I had a young lady come to me and say, are we ever going to eat after church again? <laughs> I don't know who that young lady would have been. No idea. I said, you know what? We have pizza and subs today. Pizza and subs. This is uh, a luncheon uh, for our uh, anybody and everybody who has any interest in uh, children's and youth ministry team moving forward. Uh, we are in a prayer and planning session to help make that happen. And we've got plenty of food, folks. So what I'm basically saying is you are invited to come and stay with us right after service for lunch and then to stay for the meeting and be part of that uh, prayer and planning session for a, a children's and youth ministry. We really want to seek out what God desires. You know, so many times we, we get this wrong. We tell God what we're going to do. And then we say, hey, God bless what I'm getting ready to do. Well, we want to try to, you know, not put the horse before the cart. Is that how that works? But rather to put God first and say, okay, God, here we are. Here we are. Put the cart before the horse. Because the, the horse would actually go before the cart. 
So if the, if the horse goes before the cart, that's how it should be. So we, we want to do it the right way. We don't want to put the cart. I've never used a cart and a horse except maybe when I was on my honeymoon one time. And I was in the cart. All right. So when did I lose it? It was at the beginning, wasn't it? It was at the beginning. I totally lost it. Right? So never had it. Never had it. Okay, so today, I um, encourage you to stay. Okay, so pizza and subs, youth ministry um, planning team meetings. So that is happening today. Also, next Sunday is um, new elder ordination with uh, Tom Haynes, our new elder. And then new installation of new officers with uh, Brent Niles as trustee and Midge Walsh as our treasurer. So there'll be a special little service to go along with the worship service next Sunday as well. So we encourage you to be part of that. And also, I don't want to forget home groups. We have a home group that meets every other Friday. And so that is happening again this coming Friday. So if you have some interest in that, there's a local group that meets here in Citrus Springs. And Brent and Rachel Niles will be the ones in the back. Raise your hands back there. Okay, yep, you're, you're hiding. Okay. So they're the ones to talk to if you have an interest in being part of a home group that meets on Friday at 6.30. So be a part of that. All right. I'm going to stop talking and we're going to start singing. How's that? Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the most of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you Yours is the glory. 
Father God, as we uplift your name and as we give tribute to your name, Lord, help us to realize that there is only one name that is above every other name. That is the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I just pray that as we come together, that we realize we can only come together under the authority of Jesus Christ. And Lord, thank you for bringing us together today to now come from here and to go out to do your will to pass on love, and pass on mercy, to pass on grace to everyone that we meet. Lord, be with those that are unable to be with us today. I'm saying a special prayer right now for those that are at home, that are watching. Lord, I just pray that you just keep them safe uh, from this uh, crisis. And Lord, you just give them a, a step uh, moving forward. Uh, because Lord, it's not so much about a church service as it is about the service of the church. And so, Lord, help us as we reach out to serve others and we reach out to, to be the, the hands and uh, the feet of Jesus Christ. Lord, be with those in the parking lot as well listening uh, today. And, Lord, they may be, be touched in their hearts and minds as what you have called them to do. And then, Lord, help us here as we take forth the message of Christ. Lord, be with those that are dealing with health issues, those that are dealing with uh, uh, all kinds of financial issues and different things that they may be facing. Lord, I just pray that you'd provide those answers in your time and your place. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Our weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah, 
in the middle of a mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Here you lost your hold on me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder, 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 sing a little louder. Sing a little louder, sing a little louder, sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, our weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Yet one o'er all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with Today we're focusing on unity, and of course there's a lot of cry out there for, for unity. Um, and I think it's important from a biblical perspective to take a look at what God uh, refers to when he says unity, um, because quite honestly there's a lot of things that, that unity is not, okay? Unity is not demanding that everybody have the same favorite color. Okay, so on the count of three, tell me your favorite color. One, two, three. Plaid? Did I hear? Pl That's a great. Is that you? 
plaid. That's a great color. Never thought about that before. But I demand that you be blue with the rest of us because we need to be unified. So you can't be plaid. You have to be blue. Now, that's not unity. Okay. You, you can't demand that, you know, that we just come together just because we have to come together and this and that and the other thing. Unity is not demanding. If plaid's your favorite color, that's okay. We'll, we'll work with that. Unity is not um, demanding. What unity is, is coming together under one head. And it's important for us to realize what that head is for the Christian, what that authority is for the Christian. See, a lot of people can unify together under lots of different things. You know, we can all say, okay, well, let's, let's all do this. And we all decide that everybody's doing it, so let's, let's do it. Let's all unify because everybody's doing it. But even if it's wrong and everybody's doing it, doesn't make it right, <laughs> okay? You can unify, but you can unify and still be wrong. So we want to unify under the right head. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 and verses 27 says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence then I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel. Let's not lose sight of what we must unify under. One spirit. That's not a lowercase s. That's an uppercase s. That is the Holy Spirit of God, and we take our directions from Him and unify together, contending as one man for the faith. Some people stop there. Some people stop and just say, Well, you know, let's just come together with our faith. But it's more than that, folks. It's about the faith of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I recently heard someone in a national setting offer a prayer that ended like this. And in the strong name of our collective faith, amen. Well, folks, we're going to fall short if we stop short. And when we stop short of just our faith, how is that defined? To, to what area does that come in? Well, we're just unifying on faith. Well, that's great. I can have faith that, that I can go jump off a bridge and I won't hurt myself. I can have faith that I'll go jump off a cliff and don't hurt myself. And that's a strong name of my collective faith. But if we all unify on that, we're in trouble. But if we unify on the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we will never go wrong. I encourage you today as you take the communion, as you examine your own heart, as you examine your own mind, think about the fact that as we come together, we come together under one head, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He cannot be left out of the equation, otherwise there is no equation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this highlight of our service that allows us to once again remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Lord, if it were not for that action, we would have no faith. Not faith that's lasting, not faith that's everlasting, because that faith is in you and in your son, Jesus. Lord, help us now as we remember his body with the bread, as we remember his, his blood with the juice. Lord, help us to once again uh, look at our own lives and how we can live completely and wholly for you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we prepare for our message together, we're going to sing a sermon prep chorus. It goes along with our sermon series, and he will lift you up, uh, simply entitled Humble Thyself in the Sight of the Lord. Humble thyself. Let's try it again. <laughs> Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And he Thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he, and he will, lift will lift you up higher and higher. Thanks, everyone. We're off to a good start. Good support team here. It's good to be standing here with an opportunity to speak God's word to you. Today we're going to talk about unity. You've already figured that out. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk lately about achieving unity from a political side of the spectrum. This is not a political message. I want you to know that. It is a message identifying those with whom we are unified as Christians and how to spot them, how to identify them, brothers and sisters in Christ. Before we get to the meat of the sermon, I need to tell you a couple of personal stories Two stories from my own life uh, in preacherly circles. I think we call that the setup. <laughs> By the way, thanks for your uh, communion meditation right on target. The first story is from my childhood, the summer I was 10 years old. A nearby neighbor got his hands on a, an air rifle an air rifle, it was a pellet gun, a 22 caliber pellet rifle. He, uh, he had a BB gun, we all had BB guns, but, but this, this guy was over the top with guns and he was somewhat older than me, I was 10, he was 15, he ran around with a lot of boys uh, engaged in uh, what I would call make-believe warfare. They shot at each other with BB guns from behind shrubbery and what have you. He ended up getting his eyes shot out that same summer with a BB. But on this particular occasion, he, he somehow got his hands on this air rifle, the pellet rifle, and uh, he and some other guys his age, decided that they would try their hand at shooting pigeons on the fly. As the pigeons, there were a lot of pigeons in this neighborhood, and as the pigeons flew by, they'd shoot up in the air and try to hit one. Uh, 
they let uh, some of the younger boys like myself hang around with them occasionally. It was pretty obvious they were just putting up with us, but I was there on this particular day. And while I was with them, I really was not one of them. You understand what I'm saying? Because while they were trying to shoot the pigeons out of the sky, I was praying that they would miss. Uh, I think I started out tender-hearted. It's, it's grown uh, in ever-increasing circles as I age. So at 10 years old, I was praying that God would keep the birds safe. I think you get the picture that I was with them, but I wasn't one of them. There was no unity there. You can be in company with someone. You can be around someone. But unless you share a common thought and action, you're not in unity. Now for the second story, after I graduated from Johnson Bible College and became the brand new preacher at Burnsville Christian Church in Burnsville, Indiana, which was located at the intersection of Bean Boulevard and Corn Alley. <laughs> that was that year. The next year it was Corn Boulevard and Bean Alley because it kept changing. And those of you who understand crop rotation know what I'm talking about. So here I am, brand new preacher at this church, and, and I met a couple, and when they looked at me, they went, oh my, and I thought, something's wrong here. <laughs> and they said, well, it's just, it's just that you, well, it's just that you look like someone we know. And the lady said, yes, you look like my brother-in-law. And when you come and visit us in our home, we'll show you what we mean. So a couple of weeks later, I was in their home, and they took me into their den, and hanging on the wall was my picture. <laughs> I'm telling you, this guy did not look sort of like me, and I didn't look sort of like him. It was an identical twin. They said, well, now this picture was taken when he was about the age you are now. He's, he's somewhat older than you. I said, well, well, where's this guy live? Does he have money? <laughs> I want to meet him. Well, well they said, uh, yeah, he does have money. <laughs> but he, he lives in Montana. He's a retired doctor, retired medical doctor. And I thought, wow, isn't that something about two months later, the church held what was called a mystery auction where everyone brings a box with something in it and you don't know what's in the box and you bid on the box. I remember seeing someone bid $20 on a box and when they opened it up, it had cornflakes in it. <laughs> you can do that. I bid on a box, square box, so big, and opened it up and there's a Stetson hat there, cowboy hat. I said, wow, look at that, cowboy hat. They said, it's a Stetson. And uh, the lady said, it belonged to uh, your lookalike, my brother-in-law. You know, the guy from Montana. I put it on. I, I have a very small head, uh, big brain, but small head, see. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. I do have a very small head for a man, six and seven eighths, and a hat fit perfectly. And I'm going, wait a minute, this is just weird. It's, it's, too, it's too strange. Now, I've got a point about all this, you see. And my point is that while I look like this man and he looked like me, we were not in unity. You can look like someone. They can even label themselves as your identical twin if they so choose. But without sharing beliefs and without sharing actions, there's no unity. Now we're going to talk about Christian unity. Christian unity. 
Christian unity is good. Actually, it's wonderful when practiced according to Scripture. And Paul speaks of unity among believers in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. He writes this, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now you may know there is something called the ecumenical movement. Haven't heard much about that for a few years, but, but it was really strong back in the 70s and through the 80s. It was an effort, and I assume it still is an effort, to promote worldwide unity among all religions through greater cooperation. And here's how it works. A Christian preacher, for example, may invite a, a Muslim imam to come like I would invite a Muslim imam to come and preach in this pulpit. It's not going to happen. <laughs> or a church may get together with a Hindu temple to hold a joint prayer service. Don't be drawn into this stuff and don't be fooled by it. The Bible describes unity as being among and between Christian believers, not with those who are not Christians. As a matter of fact, the Bible goes so far as to warn us against trying to become one with people of other faiths, other beliefs. For example, we are not to be yoked together with unbelievers. That's 2 Corinthians 6.14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can have with darkness? And Paul gets it even stronger in Galatians Chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, saying that if anyone tries to lead us astray and preaches a gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they should be eternally condemned. His words. Sometimes you have to be very strong and forceful. 1988, I was the vice president of a construction firm in Orlando. And every year, the subcontractors of the Orlando area have a big meeting, great big meeting, a lot of people there. And I got a call from the president of the subcontractors deal, and he said, uh, look, the association wants to invite you to give the opening prayer. And I said, I'll be glad to do that, but you need to know something. I am a Jesus man, and I will pray in Jesus' name. And he said, and I thought he might say that won't work because we had people of all faiths there. We had Jews, we had Muslims, we had who knows what, atheists. And he said, works for me. And so that's what I did. So... We cannot say that God's sheepfold, and by the way, uh, let's see, we've got a picture of a sheepfold up there. If you don't know what a sheepfold is, it is a, an enclosure in the Near East in which the shepherd has his sheep follow him in there to be safe and secure and no harm comes to them. And Jesus mentioned about being the good shepherd. And he talked about the sheepfold. God's sheepfold is big. It's tremendous. And it's open to everyone in the world. Everyone. It's open to everyone. Uh, just like uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only one Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's kind of interesting. I had this written in uh, NIV, but I remembered it in, in the King James from my boyhood. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance, 2 Peter 3, 9. So the invitation to belong to the Lord is open to every single person 
man and woman, boy and girl, everyone. And in Matthew twenty two fourteen, Jesus said that many are invited, but few are chosen, meaning that a lot of people either ignore or misunderstand the invitation. So they're invited, but they do not open or respond to the invitation. Now, we like to think of it as being super easy to accept God's invitation to belong to Jesus Christ. If you are one of those, ask yourself this question. What did Jesus mean when he said, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Please realize, please, that you are going to be around people who don't claim to be Christian in any way, shape, or form, and you automatically know that unity does not exist between them and you. They are people doing things that you don't approve of. You, like me at 10 years old, are among them, but you know their actions are wrong. On the other hand, you're going to be around people who look like you in so many respects that you have this hope for unity. They look like you, walk like you, in some cases talk like you, that is not their accent but what they say. They almost smell like you and you say, oh boy, I've got a brother here, I've got a sister here in Christ. But that doesn't mean automatically that you are one with them. For some denominations, some churches, some Christians, anything goes. And that is getting to be the way it is in the world and here in the United States that Christians think anything goes. Anything. Particularly when it comes to morals, beliefs, ethics behavior but what did Jesus say Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit and he was talking about holiness not tolerance holiness defines the narrow road and small gate that Jesus spoke of in Matthew chapter 7 holiness is the gold standard of Christianity What's it mean? It means that all of us have been created in the image of God. But not all of us are God's children. So you're going to brush up against people everywhere you go that are not God's children. We're not all lambs in God's flock. And not all of us are sheep securely safe in God's sheep's fold. But for those of us who are... We are united. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> you don't know who they are <laughs> so very often. They're all over the world. Sometimes you bump up against it, yes. But this sheepfold is so big, or you can call it a tent if you like. God's tent of saved people is so big that you can't know all of them. We don't, we don't know all of each other, but we're united. Strange, right? It works like this. Some of us have met and know each other, but there are more of God's lambs that we don't know than those we do because they live everywhere. And some of them eat different foods than we eat. I mean, like, you, you go up to northern Michigan, they've got some strange food up there. <laughs> Actually, we have a lady here from northern Michigan, and she's a very good cook. And her husband does all right. <laughs> but they experience a different culture. They speak different languages, like me. You know I speak two languages, English and hillbilly. And I'm proud of it. And they don't dress like us, but we are united. 
how is that to be? Let me explain. First off, we are united in love. 1 John 4, 7 and 8, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. There are men and women, boys and girls all over the world, united with because of the bond of love. We sang that earlier, the bond of love. And we are one with them. <laughs> The woman in Mongolia who is a Christian and desires her utmost to please Christ does not have a sign on her saying, I am George Plant's Christian sister. She doesn't send that to me through Facebook or whatever. I don't know her, but she's there. Just like the man in the jungles of Brazil who desires with his whole heart to please God and follow Christ. He's my brother. I don't know him. I never met him. If he came to America, I wouldn't know him. But we are united through this bond of love. In addition to that, we are united in belief because we believe the same. 1 Corinthians 1.10 Paul writes, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. These aren't the cheap grace people. These aren't the anything goes people. These aren't the believe and get rich people, not the name it and claim it people. These are the people all over the world doing their very, very best to try and stay on the narrow path. The people who have it foremost in their minds and hearts to please God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're united with them. We're united in obedience. 1 John 2, verses 3 through 6, tells us how we can know we belong to Christ. You want to wonder if you belong to Christ or not? I'm going to read it right here. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. Oh. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Wow! How in the world am I going to walk as Jesus did? Can't do that. I am an imperfect man. What John means is that we are to strive our very, very best. Strive to walk as Jesus did. Strive for perfection. We are imperfect persons, folks. Believers, yes, but imperfect. And please understand, we're united with hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of other imperfect people all over the world who are striving to walk as Jesus did and failing in that as we fail. And asking for, give, for forgiveness in that as we ask for forgiveness. And getting up and trying it all over again as we also do. They're just like us. These imperfect brothers and sisters who struggle like us. Might not look like us, might not dress like us, talk like us. But they are identical to us in their heart of hearts. And you know what? we will be united with them in the resurrection to come. That means we'll be together in the kingdom of heaven when the time comes that we rise up with heavenly bodies. You can read all about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Very interesting chapter of the Bible. And now I want to finish with a true story. There was a guy named Fred Craddock. He's long gone now. A graduate of Johnson Bible College. And he and Mrs. Craddock were vacationing in Tennessee in Gatlinburg. Um, 
You know Gatlinburg, probably. Some of you have been there. You know Pigeon Forge. When, when Brenda and I lived nearby, we called it Pigeonburg because they kind of ran together, see. But Fred Craddock and Mrs. Craddock were vacationing, and they were in a quiet little restaurant looking forward to a private meal, just the two of them. And while they were waiting for the meal, they noticed a distinguished-looking white-haired man moving from table to table visiting guests. He knew almost everyone in the restaurant. And Fred whispered to his wife, I hope he doesn't come over here. He didn't want the man to intrude on their privacy. But the man did come over and, in a good-natured way, asked them where they were from. And Fred said, well, we're from Oklahoma. Splendid state, I hear, he said, although I've never been there. What do you do for a living? And Fred knew how to get rid of this guy. Because every time he would tell someone he was a preacher, the conversation abruptly ended. It happens to us. <laughs> and so he said, I teach homiletics at the Graduate Seminary at Phillips University. Oh, the man said, so you teach preachers, do you? And that surprised Fred that the guy would know what the word homiletics meant. But he did. And he went on. He said, well, I've got a story I want to tell you. <laughs> oh, no, not a story. And with that, he pulled up a chair and sat down at the table with them. Oh, my. And Fred groaned inwardly. Here comes another preacher story. So the man stuck out his hand, and he said, my name is Ben Hooper. Anyone here from Tennessee? Oh, yeah, you... You remember, no, you don't remember Ben Hooper, but you heard of him. Yeah. He says, I was born not far from here across the mountains. My mother wasn't married when I was born. And so I had a hard time. When I started to school, my classmates had a name for me, and it wasn't a very nice name. I used to go off by myself at recess, and during lunchtime, because of the things my playmates said that cut so deeply. What was worse was going downtown on Saturday afternoon and feeling every eye burning a hole through you. It was a little town. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone's business, but they didn't know who my daddy was. I didn't know who my daddy was. And they were all wondering just who it might be. When I was about 12 years old, a new preacher came to our church and I'd always go in late and slip out early, but one day the preacher said the benediction so fast I got caught and had to walk out with the crowd. I could feel every eye in the church on me. Just about the time I got to the door, I felt a big hand on my shoulder. I looked up, and the preacher was looking right at me, and he asked this question. He said, Who are you, son? Whose boy are you? Uh-oh. I felt the old weight come on me. It was like a big black cloud. Even the preacher was putting me down. But as he looked down at me, studying my face, he began to smile, a big smile of recognition. Wait a minute, he said. I know who you are. I see the family resemblance. Every ear in the church was tuned in to see who he was going to name as my father. And then he said, you are a son of God. God is your daddy. And with that, he slapped me across the back and said, Boy, you've got a great inheritance. Go and claim it. And this distinguished-looking white-haired man looked across the table at Fred and said, That was the most important single sentence ever said to me. And with that, he smiled, shook their hands, moved on to another table. And suddenly, Fred Craddock said, I remembered that on two occasions the people of Tennessee had elected an illegitimate person to be their governor, and one of them was a guy named Ben Hooper. Know who you are. Know what you are. You're a child of God, and know your relatives, your brothers and sisters in Christ, even when you've never seen them or met them, 
They heard their voice. That's unity. Love it. And live it. Amen. And now, by all the power that resides in the heavenly realm, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your word, Lord. And we thank you for being unified with those who aim to please you, do their best to live in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. As we bring our worship uh, to a close here today, we simply want to turn our eyes back upon Jesus. Um, because when we talk about unity, that's what it's all about, um, is going back to the one who is, uh, is the head. So if you are here today, and uh, if you have any decision that uh, you'd like to make or questions, or if you want to just come and ask for prayer, or perhaps uh, if you've already uh, taken steps to repent of your sins, be baptized into Christ, and uh, you want to place your membership here at North Citrus, we can welcome you as well. We're going to sing this uh, imitation song simply entitled, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It's supposed to be standing uh, as we sing. You may go ahead and take a seat. Um, Chelsea, did you want to come and say a few words? I know you had mentioned that you wanted to, to share. Um, Chelsea Welch is uh, coming from the Jacksonville area and is now back in this area, and she wants to share a few words with us. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody that has been praying for me. Um, last night, my answer, my prayers were answered, and I am now able to pay my car payment and my car insurance. So I am very blessed, and I just wanted to say thank you for everything that you guys have been praying for. Thank you. <laughs> You're a good audience good to be here with you, and I'll have you in my heart as the day and the weeks roll along, and I ask God's blessing on you now, and so Father, for these folks here in attendance, and those folks on the parking lot also in attendance, and whoever may be watching us, Lord, on the internet, I ask this tremendous blessing that we always, always, always know that we are your children and that we act accordingly, that we strive to please you, stay on that narrow path and enter through that small gate of salvation. I thank you, Father, for your scriptures. I thank you even for the troubles in life that keep me from growing arrogant. And thinking it's all just handed to me. 
and I ask your blessing watching over these folks that are going out and they're coming in to keep them from harm and trouble. Hold it at bay, please. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's be standing. I do want to remind you, right after church, we do have a youth ministry uh, meeting uh, planned for team meeting, and so we've got some pizza and subs, so plenty uh, back there. Do we'll take our time getting it together. Do ask kind of coming and going. Use some common sense precautions, okay? So we'll use the big fellowship hall next door and kind of spread out a little bit, but we'll get some pizza in the oven here before too long and, and get rolling in that direction. So let's end um, with our uh, song that we opened with, and that's just the first verse of We Are One in the Bond of Love. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one. Have a great week, everybody.